early afternoon and happy Wednesday. I'm Beverly Hosford. This is Aaron Nitschke. We Hi. are doing our NFPT live thing. We've been doing it for 50 episodes now, which is really exciting. We've come full circle to a year. We actually started the show a year ago, right before Idea World 2017. And now Idea World 2018 kicks off here, I think today, actually. Yeah, that's yeah, probably... It's just, a pre pre-session or whatever they call it. Yeah. Yeah. And so if anyone I see Billy is sharing the show right now over in the idea world convention attendees group, if anyone's that idea, you know, say hello, tell us what's going on. I don't know what goes on on Wednesday. I think it's mostly pre-conference sessions. I've never really gone on a Wednesday. I usually show up Thursday and I'll be flying out there tomorrow morning on the 6am flight, which I'm not excited about getting up before. (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, if you're just jumping on with us, feel free to share the show, ta- hashtag Idea World, so that anyone that's at Idea World looking for something to watch or hang out with us, we're here. I'm going to go ahead and practice what I preach. How are you doing today, Erin? I'm good. I'm excited for you to head to Idea World and, and share your amazing presentation. Oh, thank you. I wish I was going, but unfortunately, I'm just, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, it's... It's crazy. And I'm going to post the episode from last year up here. So last year we, uh, we talked about what to do at a convention and we gave four really awesome tips, but this year we're going to go the other way and we're going to talk about what not to do at the convention. So we're going to have a little fun here. You know, I, we don't usually like to focus on the negative, but we just needed to mix it up and yeah. yeah so yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll be out there. So if you're going to be there, say hi, I'm presenting on sleep science on Friday night and foot fitness and foot anatomy on Saturday with Stacey Lee Krause, who's one of my favorite presenters. So it's a great honor. But anyway, let's, um, let me just review what's in this article from last year real quick. I just can't help. Um, we had set a goal for the convention. So have an intention for me this year. My intention is to go to any session that has to do with mindfulness, behavior change, um, or like body awareness type concepts. And there actually are quite a few this year. So I'm really excited about that. I'm going to a session on interoception, which we had an episode on last week. Or two yeah. Ago. Interoception, right? Yeah. So I'm really stoked about that. Number two is plan your sessions. Choose a few that are outside the box. I'm not very good at that. <laughs> that, was, that was your tip, Aaron. I'm very like stingy about my sessions, but I feel like interoception is pretty outside the box. Um, yeah. Um, and then number three is take breaks, get plenty of rest, um, take some you know time. It's not advantageous to jam more information in. It's usually better to take a break, which we're going to talk about today. And number four was take notes and ask questions and build relationships. And we have some episodes of NFPT Live all about that, mentors and relationships and networking. You can check those out if you want some tips on how to do that. But let's get to the don'ts. So... Yeah. Do you want to kick us off, Erin? What are our, these are things not to do at Idea World or at any convention. <laughs> yeah, or, or at any professional endeavor. Um, <laughs> so the first one we we have advised, don't don't drink too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, go to bed early. Um, yeah, you're, you're away from home. Maybe some of you are parents and you're away from your children. And, oh, it's, you know, San Diego, ready to cut loose, have fun. Don't do that. <laughs> it will not pay off in the end. Um, and and getting sleep is really important. And we're not just driving that home because Bev is presenting on it, but because there's incredible research on the benefits of making sure that you recover. You allow yourself that time to recover. It's the same message we would give our clients, right? So take that for, for what it is and apply that to your own experience at, at the Idea World Convention. Yeah, we want you to have fun, but... Hmm. Yeah, if you're not usually a drinker, whether that be caffeine or alcohol, like don't drink too much caffeine either. Because I definitely see some people run around those conventions that are like spinning around like a Tasmanian devil because they've had so many protein bars and, and coffee and caffeine and they're just like, Ugh, and it's, yeah. it's not going to be super easy to absorb information and absorb the experience if you're like, you know, on a caffeine high or if you've gotten too much alcohol in your system and yeah. But it can be fun to do that stuff if you're not usually a drinker and you can actually have a drink or two because you're away from your kids. But, yeah, set those limits and boundaries ahead of time with yourself for sure. Yeah, yeah, a drink or two, but not 10. Um, <laughs> you know, 
be mindful of that. You're there to learn and some of you are there to teach. Yeah. Yeah. And get those drinks in earlier in the night because we know metabolizing alcohol is harder after 10 p.m. So and you're going to be in a different time zone. So your your body is coming from a different time zone, maybe meet for some of you. And so we've got to kind of honor our home time zone that first day or two until the body adjusts. Right. Exactly. That was tip number one. If you like tip number one, put a number one. We've got five for you today. Number one is don't drink too much. And, you know, if you're if you're feeling like you need to drink a bunch to have fun, you might just go to bed and then get up in the morning and feel rested and you'll have a lot more fun the next day that way than you will if you're hungover. <laughs> um, sure. Tip number two is don't try to one up a presenter or even a person at the trade show. Uh just, uh, you know, if you're someone that desires to be on the stage and be a presenter or be a trade show person, then perhaps apply for that position or, you know, put yourself in that position and put yourself in their shoes. You know, presenters, especially like myself, we are human beings and we are nervous and we are presenting our passion and our heart. And it's really frustrating when someone tries to like, you know, get up on stage, so to speak, and show that they know more than you or, or what have you. So be humble and, and think carefully about the questions you're going to ask. And that goes back to not drinking too much caffeine. I feel like yeah. the people that say the silliest things they've had, like, you're like, lay off the caffeine because you're not making any sense and you're kind of aggressive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's so important because teaching, I mean, essentially that's what the presenters are there to do is to teach and to share, but they're also there to learn something. And I think if you are someone that is not presenting, you're still there to teach and you're still there to learn, wow. but being respectful of the fact that teaching is hard. I don't care what venue you are in. And, and I think one of the most difficult venues to present in is, is not to a group of students or learners that are just starting out and maybe they're college students or high school students. It's to your colleagues. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, colleagues, uh, at least it's been my experience that they tend, there's a certain um, <clears throat> arrogance about a crowd that is in the same field. And I think this goes across the board. It's not just our industry. I think when you get, when you're someone that might have an equal level of education or experience and someone's up there and you disagree with them, that's totally fine to disagree, but don't try to one up the presenter. It's it's rude, it's unprofessional, and it's no way to forge a relationship. So bearing in mind that anyone that's up there presenting has some courage. Yeah. That is major courage. This is not presenting in front of 10 people. These sessions are hundreds of people in most instances. So understanding that, that that's courage. And they probably spent six months planning for this presentation and if you're anything like Bev and I you will rethink it about 45 million times and I guarantee you while she's on the plane she's still going to be rethinking it because that's the way we roll so just yeah. bear that in mind don't one up the presenter ask intelligent questions and if you do have a differing opinion that's okay mm -hmm. every body of literature out there every every research study that's ever been done there's there's differing opinions that that come out of that that are discovered and uncovered. Yeah. So keep that in mind too. Yeah, we're not the end authority. Presenters no. are sharing their perspective and hopefully sharing some scientific evidence to back it up. And right. yeah, that's so just keep it keeping that in mind. We're not when presenters aren't up there to hopefully to try to be a know it all like or anything. No. Like that. We're there just to share a perspective and get a conversation going. So that's mm -hmm. number two. If you like number two, respect your presenters. Put a uh, number two in the comments. Erin, you want to share number three? Sure. So number three is don't buy anything on the first day. There's a, It's a trade show. There's a ton of different materials there, programs, equipment, products, all sorts of things. Take some time to really absorb it and take a tour. Figure out really what the necessity is. Learn about it. So don't, don't kind of be that early adopter and just buy everything all at once. <laughs> Think about it. Um, maybe maybe have some latency in that decision and ask the right questions of the vendors and figure out why do I what 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 can I see myself doing with this? Wow. For example. Yeah, I think that's great. And I mean, aside from that, sometimes you can get a discount on the last day, which you know, but you could also there's also the chance of them running out of a certain product and some of you might be heading there and like, you know, something that you want to buy. So that that's a special case. But yeah, I think it's smart to, to take a day or two and, and not pull that trigger right away. 
Awesome. Right. So that was number three. Don't buy a bunch of stuff on the first day, right. especially because you might need to account in your suitcase for that room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bought exactly. an indoor board, and then I was like, oh, wait, now how, mm. how does this <laughs> So uh, that was number three. If you like number three, put a number three, put your hands in the air. And number four is similar to the advice we gave last year. Don't go to every session, take breaks. You know, maybe every session is on your schedule. Like you've got every time block accounted for, but there comes a time and place when taking a break is really valuable. And taking a break doesn't mean going over to the trade show or hanging out with a friend. Mm -hmm. A true break would be finding a quiet spot, closing your eyes, maybe putting in some earplugs or headphones and setting a timer for 20 minutes and cutting out all that extra sensory input the visual, the auditory, and just letting your brain like take a break. Now, ideally, you would go back to your room, maybe get some quiet there, but it can be quite the haul to get to your room um, and maybe even take a nap. I know I will be taking a nap because I find them incredibly valuable. And if I don't take a nap, I can't shut down. I'm like, oh, I just can't. <laughs> and I might not take a nap, but I will go back to my room. I feel like it's worth it. Versus trying to cram more information in. In fact, research shows if you take a nap, you're actually able to move short-term memory to long-term memory during the nap. And then you have more room in your brain to upload additional information, which is really cool. If you were to take a 60 to 90 minute nap, I just learned that your brain actually goes into REM sleep, which mm -hmm. REM sleep is how our brain makes memory associations. So that that maybe not necessary to convention, that's more valuable when you're trying to come up with new ideas or you're trying to brainstorm or problem solve, but just some fun facts there. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally agree with that. Um, it can be really overwhelming. There's a lot of information and those conventions go for four days, essentially five if, if you're there today. So take take that time to reflect. I think it's really important to just kind of absorb that material. And for me, when I sit there and I reflect on something that I've learned or that I've attended, it gives me an opportunity to think of more questions, questions that might not be necessary to ask the presenter right then and there. But most of them will have their contact information available. And I think a fair amount of them are very willing to engage with their participants. Yeah. And so to ask them questions later on, like, I found this really intriguing and I'm just wondering what you think about this. Again, it's kind of like what we said with point number two, not one one upping the presenter, but just just opening the door to a conversation because you never know how where it's going to go. You could create a great partnership or you might spark an idea for that for that individual that presented. So it's just that reflective piece that allows you to just kind of go back and think, wow, that was really interesting. Or what remaining questions do I have about this? Or what does this mean for me in my practice? Yeah, I love that, that reflection. You might change your direction for the convention. Maybe you had a certain intention coming in and maybe that intention has been filled and you could now change directions or be courageous and go to a session that you wouldn't normally go to, which is something I should probably do. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like that reflection can really it can get you out of autopilot and back into your body and back into your consciousness and just being aware versus because you make your schedule way ahead of the convention, you have certain intentions and yeah, partway through you're changing, you're evolving while you're there. And right. the only way to catch on to that is if you take a moment and let your brain actually process. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Awesome. So we've got, so if you like tip number four, go ahead and put a four in the comments. I love our little crowd today who's, who's coming along with us. We've got people saying, be a learn it all, not a know it all. And don't be a one up or ever. And I got my best deal on the last day, right as the exhibit hall was closing. Nice. And I like to find a funny TV show to rest my brain and laugh. Yeah. Laughter is really amazing. Laughter, dance. There's lots of ways to just take a break from all that stimulation. So our last point, Aaron, you want to say it? Sure. So our last point, and this is a rule that you should just have all the time in your daily life is just don't be a jerk. Like, don't be a jerk. Like, it's not that hard to be kind and to be nice and to be polite. Um, but particularly at conventions, there's a lot of people and most people have traveled great distances to be there. Everybody's tired. It, it's hot, probably. Um, so just bear in mind that everybody there is a human. <laughs> And maybe just do your part to 
have that respect for for other people. It's really easy to to pop off and and be a jerk when we're tired or we're run down or we're overstimulated or we're stressed out. But yeah, don't be a jerk. That's just that's as simple as it gets. <laughs> yeah, be gracious. I don't know what other people are dealing with. And like Aaron said, people are, we are tired from traveling. We're in different time zones, a lot of us. And so we just need to be patient with each other and be kind. And most of the time I, I see that happening, but yeah, there are definitely some instances there. And I feel like along with that, you know, we had a couple other little tips that go with it. You know, make sure you shower and wear deodorant and brush your teeth. Those are some other ones that, you know, Go along with don't be in a jerk. Don't be a jerk. <laughs> don't be smelly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't be a smelly jerk particularly. But um, <laughs> but yeah, like just be mindful that you're around a whole bunch of other people and, and present your best self. Even if you're not the one on the stage, it doesn't matter. You're still there as a networking opportunity. At least I, I, I think a lot of people go hoping to network and to learn and to grow in their careers and in their mindset. So put your best foot forward um, and and make a good impression. And yeah, just just be mindful. <laughs> totally. And that's where coming back to taking those breaks comes in. Yeah. When you take that mental break, you're much more likely to be pleasant with people and getting getting as much sleep as you can at night. Also, because we know that REM sleep restores our emotional and social capabilities. So that, you know, making sure you get to bed early enough so you can get to the REM sleep because the REM sleep comes last. And if we aren't getting enough, we're only getting six or seven hours, we're cutting it off and then we're more likely to be a jerk. So <laughs> yeah, kind of yeah, unconscious. Don't, so, um, don't be a jerk and go get some more REM sleep, would you? <laughs> yeah. All y'all need to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help us throw some sleep references in there. April yeah. said that she just t- told her daughters not to be a jerk to each other. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Good job, mom. Yeah. And get some REM sleep and a nap, would you? <laughs> Sweet. Well, thanks for hanging out with us today. That's what we've got for you. Just some tips, just in the light of the convention. And we are not going to be here next week. We're taking off the 4th of July. So we will, we will miss you, but we're taking a break. And then two weeks after that, which is going to be, let's see, the 4th is on a Wednesday, uh, July 11th, we'll be back. And we're going to give you a recap from the convention. So um, we'll be just picking up and I'll be sharing some of what I saw. Erin will be sharing what she's been reading on social media and she'll bring some light to it for us. And we'll, we'll see you at that episode. So keep everyone posted and let them know to join us on July 11th. Yes. And then come back and share with us what you learned from the convention. Yes. As always, if you have any other tips, like Billy said, stay hydrated. Um, Mandy says, use your funny bone. (laughs) So yeah, share your tips. We love them. Especially if you're watching this after it aired, we always check in on the um, comments afterwards. So share that and let us know. Yeah. Come and join us to tell us what you learned at the convention. And if you liked this and found it helpful, then click that share button and hashtag idea world when, when you do that. Yes. Uh, PT. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't forget that. We'll see you in two weeks. Yeah. See ya. <laughs>